I always knew I would record because it was in my blood and growing up in my household it was filled with music laughter and dance so I'm always laughing so that wasn't a problem dancing eh. but singing <clears throat> now that was for me so of course I did what every other Hollywood singer songwriter does you make a demo and then you go to the Sunset Strip to the Whiskey A Go Go and all the other clubs every night and you mingle and you stay on the dance floor <laughs> with the rest of the cuckoo birds. And eventually somebody notices you when you have pajamas on and you're drinking three dollars, three wines. I mean, they get to know you and they're like, do you want to come and play me your demo tape? So it was a lot of that. And eventually I got on the A&M lot and went to Jeff Barry. And from there, the whole Phil Spector thing started. Uh, working with Phil was great for me because I got to work with so many wonderful musicians, all the studio guys from that time and to sing live while they were playing. Um, here it comes and here I go again. It wasn't the first time. I mean, I recorded it a few times, but I got the final time to sit in the middle of the room with these guys. So working with Phil was tedious and unending uh, because, wow, <laughs> There was a lot of that. And um, if you were lucky, no guns would go off that night. So there wouldn't be any of those kind of interruptions. But I mean, it was wonderful because being a part of the wall of sound was, was really a big piece of history to be involved in. I was surrounded by 25 musicians when I recorded my song, uh, the final time. And I sat in the center of the room on a stool and just sang live. And it was wonderful. It was really, really exciting to sit there and, and do that with everybody. When you were on Phil Spector's radar, I mean really up there on his radar, your every move was watched. From in his house where I would go to the bathroom and just wave because the cameras were everywhere, to a point where I would get out of Phil's house and go to a party and Parties in the 70s never ended. So it's morning, the phone rings, and it's Phil looking for me. Now, I'm in someone's house I don't know. So how does he know where I am? I swear, people were following me all the time. His people were out letting him know what I was doing. That was the only thing I could think of. One of the most fun things was standing in the studio with John Lennon with my hands on his shoulders and just getting in there and singing with him on the rock and roll album. It was really wonderful. Um, I did a lot of records that I'm, all the records that I did, I'm proud of. Uh, I was the singer on El Coco's Let's Get It Together that went number one in Europe, disco hit. As a matter of fact, uh, at one of the Christmases where my brother, um, we were all gathered in New York at my parents' house, we put the record on and my brother was shocked that that was his sister's because he learned to hustle to that record. So that, that was fun. Um, I was a featured singer with David Benoit on Heavier Than Yesterday. I sang uh, I Wish Right Now Would Never End 
and that was fun learning the song from David Benoit and singing the vocal that I did it was very mellow and jazz and that's what I grew up with so that was wonderful I did uh, Hooray for Hollywood, the Coney Island Chorus Girls, with my sister. That was a blast. And we did a lot of studio work for the Warner Brothers. Not Warner Brothers, the Warner Brothers. Two guys named Joe and Frank Warner. Close, but. And um, that got chosen to be Rona Barrett's theme song for her television show, so that was wonderful. Um, I'll get back to you on more later. Another artist that I loved working with every second was Nils Lofgren, recording with Nils from the E Street Band. I'm sure you all know him. It was, um such great music and it did stretch me as a singer because he the way his phrasing he just does things quite different than I was used to so it was very enjoyable to work with him so I have been very busy singing uh, for the past 30 years oh god how old are you um, I did tour with the Shangri-Las for 25 years and it was it was a wonderful experience and a lot of fun and I saw a lot of cities and a lot of countries and I really had a lot of laughs and the music was wonderful to be a part of that. I've recorded a lot of music for Young Pals Records and I had a record out with them. Ihan Sahin is the man that owns this label. He started it and he is a producer and a writer. I had a record out with him, uh, My Love Is Your Love, and I do a lot of session work for him. I most recently sang on Randy Jones's new record, um, Hard Times, and that is the cowboy from the Village People. And I also sang on Anita Ward's new record on Ihan's label. And it's funny because I had just been doing live shows with her before that up at the Massachusetts State Fair. And she sings her ass off. She is wonderful. Um, I've been working with people like uh, Mark Farner from Grand Funk Railroad, loving every second of singing with him. He's an amazing performer. I worked with Joey Mullen from Badfinger. I mean, every song just melts your heart. He's, he's so wonderful, such a wonderful human being. Um, I have a new record out, and that record uh, was written and produced by Peter Angel at One Art Records, and it's called Every Time You're Near, and we are doing a little bit work here and there with this record. It is available on iTunes and CD Baby, and I'm very proud of that, and we should be cutting an EP soon, so I'll keep you posted on that. So in the 80s, I recorded a song written by Peter Angel when I was signed to Atlantic Records. And I was in touch with Peter on and off throughout the years. But then I was listening to the soundtrack of Kiss Yesterday Goodbye. And I heard a song in there that really caught my ears. And I called Peter and I said I would really be interested in singing this song and he was totally into it too. I flew to LA and we went over the song and I recorded it in his studios and this is the song that I have out now, Every Time You're Near. It's written and produced by Peter Angel on One Art Music. And what's so interesting about this particular record is, just like my Phil Spector record, this record is with total live musicians, just like my Phil Spector. 
What's so different for me this time around is uh, the social media thing. I think it's wonderful to be able to connect with so many people and get your voice heard, get your music heard. They can see you and you can reach people all over the world any hour, whenever you want. And that's, that's really a plus. I do have plans to record an EP with Peter Angel and that's going to happen soon. I'm looking forward to that and just continuing what I'm doing. Live shows are just so great to connect with the audience and recording is a blast. I love it. It is really amazing that I can hold my vinyl Phil Spector record in one hand, here it comes and here I go again, and see my new record, Every Time You're Near, on iTunes. That's pretty amazing to me.